so I'll be talking, uh, my uh, paper presentation is uh, on the clinical dem demographic profile and treatment outcomes of post-fever retinitis. This is a comparative study before and after the first wave of COVID-19. So uh, post-fever retinitis is an immune retinitis, as we all know, and it occurs uh, between two to four weeks after a febrile condition. And it occurs with epidemics of dengue, chikungunya, rickettsial infections with seasonal variation. And the resolution occurs with or without treatment, and uh, there is usually good visual recovery. So COVID-19 pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, there was a decrease in some vector-borne disease during this uh, period, mainly because people were not uh, going out as much, and there was lockdown uh, at that point. And febrile illness, uh, it is a febrile illness with multi-system involvement, which involves the ocular and orbital manifestation. And uh, there has been a study which suggested that uh, there was no difference in clinical presentation and treatment outcome of uh, post fever retinitis amongst COVID serology positive and negative patients. And the overall, uh, we wanted to study the overall impact of COVID pandemic on the clinical presentation and treatment outcomes. So our research question was that is there a significant difference in the clinical presentation and treatment outcomes of post fever retinitis cases presenting before and after the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, it was a single center retrospective study, uh, tertiary eye uh, hospital in central India. And uh, patients diagnosed with uh, post fever retinitis were clubbed into two groups, April 2019 to March 2020, which is uh, the main time for uh, post fever retinitis to occur. And uh, this was uh, grouped as pre COVID era because this was before the COVID. And then April 2020 to March 21, this was uh, grouped as post COVID era. So uh, the diagnostic criteria was uh, fluffy yellow white retinitis lesion, interretinal hemorrhages following episodes of fever and uh, after all the infective uh, retinitis was ruled out. So methodology, uh, we collected the data of the patient, we took history, details of the fever, uh, the time interval between the uh, fever and the diminution of vision, we took fundus photography, FFA and OCT was done. So in methodology, outcome measures were latent period between fever and diminution of vision, time to presentation, the anterior chamber and vitreous uh, reaction, uh, disc edema, and FFA findings, and also visual acuity and the treatment given and uh, resolution. So routine investigation for uveitis was done. Uh, Eli ELISA for dengue, chikungunya, PS uh, for malarial parasite, Vidal, Vil Felix for rickettsial, and COVID-19 rat test and COVID antibody test. This was not done in all the cases, only in 18 of the 25 cases. We gave oral steroids as a uh, treatment and we tapered based on the response. One patient with resolving ret retinitis was not given any treatment. And patients with severe disease uh, were given uh, intravitreal, uh, intravenous uh, dexamethasone for three days and followed by oral steroids. So patients with a positive wheel felix were given oral doxycycline. And retinal neovascularization was seen in four cases. In one of them, we gave intravitreal antivigil. So statistical analysis was done, uh, varied uh, tests were uh, done for the parameters. The results were pre-COVID era group had 29 eyes of 19 patients and post-COVID had 40 eyes of 25 patients. Rest of the things were insignificant except for the duration of DOV at presentation which was 14.21 in the pre-COVID era and in post-COVID it was around 24.6. So the monthly, monthly distribution is around November to March which is after the monsoon season ends and winter season starts. The other things were that everything, the vitritis, the disc edema, and macular involvement were more seen in the post-COVID era. Even the vasculitis and posterior, posterior pole involvement with macular edema on OCT, all were seen most more in the post-COVID era, and they were uh, significant. The other uh, finding which uh, was there was that the wheel felic re reaction was positive in 84% of the patients in post-COVID era group as compared to 47% in pre-COVID era group, which suggests a change in the, uh, 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 in the diagnosis of the patients and the results because uh, usually wheel felix is not commonly seen in uh, Central India. And the rest of the tests were mostly negative in both the groups. And uh, the COVID antibodies were positive only in two of the 18 patients which were tested in the post-COVID era group. So COVID was uh, seen not to be related with the uh, change in the presentation. The other thing was that doxycycline was given to 84% on all the patients who had wheel felix. And only one patient who had extensive vascularization, uh, as we've talked about, was given antivigil. So uh, the other thing is that the time to resolution of retinitis was better in the post-COVID era group. This may be related because of the lockdown measures. So the study highlights the disruptions in the healthcare delivery and delayed patient presentations caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. There was higher incidence, as we've talked about, of the positive wheel felix uh, reaction, higher occurrence of posterior pole involvement, so we should be aware and treat uh, extensively in these patients. The, the higher involvement of macular and more severe diseases may be due to later presentation in case of co uh, during the COVID time. And COVID-19 infection seems unlikely to be the cause of difference. 
So the strengths were that it was studied variations in presentations and outcomes and in re seasonal pattern of PFR and featuring of preceding illness. The limitation was that it was a retrospective nature of study and we were unable to assess COVID antibodies in all the cases. We only did it in 18 cases and no direct documentation and uh, diagnosing of the illness was done in majority of the cases. Uh, these were the references. Thank you. What was the time period when you collected this data? The pre-COVID data, what is the cutoff period you have taken and so what is April the... April 20 to uh, uh, March 20, uh, sorry, April 2019 to uh, March uh, 2020. That is your pre-COVID era? Yes, sir. And from 1st April... Since the, yes, sir, March, because uh, the first wave started during that time. After yeah. that, for, for one year, we collected the COVID data. Okay. Why it's uh, increased, that is, but response is better, you are telling? No, sir, uh, actually the thing is that as we <laughs> know that it usually heals by itself also. And uh, there has not been a demarcation as such that whether we should give treatment or not. There have been ma ma major studies done in Narayan Netrali which have suggested that doxycycline may be the only treatment which is effective even when they don't give steroids. So uh, in our cases, we usually at our center give steroids, but because of the later presentation, uh, the time period is usually six to eight weeks for PFR to heal by itself also. So because th the patient presented late to us, there was we thought that because of that, there was more inflammation in these cases and we started the uh, treatment also later. But because the time period is six to eight weeks, so they got better also earlier. That is what we thought uh, according to the study yeah, that we found. Question, because that is, is it COVID antibodies giving pseudo positive for a VLFLX test? It can, sir. We, we, we haven't seen that. Maybe, uh, that, maybe that can yeah, be because possible. Because why there is so much Wheel fallacy, yes, sir. Because uh, we also studied the latest trends uh, during the, like we are in based in Madhya Pradesh, so we studied the latest trends of the rickettsial infection also. <laughs> they were not as such uh, highly reported rickettsial infection. Yeah. The other thing is that wheel felix is not very specific yeah. for the rickettsia also. Yeah, as but such. It's a but positive. Yes, sir. But, sir, when we gave doxycycline, like uh, recently we've started also giving only doxycycline, the patients uh, did improve only on doxycycline rather than giving oral steroids with them. This is the, like the latest development. COVID also they started giving the doxycycline, no, initially? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. We can proceed to the next. 